hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict. Uh, thanks for checking out the videos. Appreciate everyone that continues to come back here. Don't forget, you can go to lincolnaddict.com. Uh, we have the white stickers, the blue stickers, and the shirts. They're on pre-sale right now. Uh, I'm submitting the order uh, this weekend, and about two weeks they will ship out um, to me. I'll bag and tag them, and I'll ship them out to everyone. So lincolnaddict.com. So today's June 5th, keeping with the theme for 6.5, we're going to look at a couple of 65s on bringatrailer.com. You can actually uh, search uh, Lincoln Continental, and what it will do is bring back, as I mentioned, some of the prices and based upon their history. I think they've been around um, a good five, six years, this website. It took me to scroll back half a year or so to find a 65, which was here. This was November, and actually, there's another one that was sold in uh, very end of the year, so about five, six months ago. Uh, what I want to do is primarily focus on this one, and then we'll talk about this car here that sold about two months prior uh, for a lot more money. But um, again, appreciate everyone coming here. I do this just out of uh, the love for these cars. Uh, folks have reached out to me through my email or um, my Instagram, Lincoln Addict, and I'm always happy to help. Uh, if I have time, you can uh, find me, Lincoln Addict, on Facebook or Instagram. I do my best to respond. Uh, you can also uh, email Lincoln Addict Podcast at gmail.com. So, 65 Lincoln Continental Convertible, uh, you get the front three quarter shot here. What you're going to find immediately, you're going to see some things that kind of stick out um, on, on maybe why this car went for 61000 whereas this one two months prior went for 90000 So you have the top up here. It talks about some of the basic things that we've all uh, kind of went through, the 430 V8, automatic trans, uh, the power top, rear hinge doors. Current owner acquired the car 2016. And service in preparation for uh, sale included topping off fluids, adjusting the carb, and replacing fuel gauge, as well as ignition module. So, you know, kind of a minor tune-up there. They do talk about the Bluetooth stereo hidden. The Continentals offered by the seller on behalf of its owner with their recent uh, receipt and Florida title in the same name. So you got the rear three-quarter shot here. And again, like I always say, I, I tend to want to look at the bumper here to see if there's any ding. And the main reason for that, again, is if the car did jump into reverse, um, I, I need to uh, dig up one of the photos of my 64. As I mentioned, I had a temporary bumper on there while my original was getting chromed. And it just had a huge dent in here, and it, it made the whole bumper look um, not straight. Uh, so as soon as you see it, you know, you'll know what that is. But um, it looks pretty straight through here. Um, it talks about the car is in new charcoal frost metallic S and has been refinished with metallic white. Features uh, a tan top. So far, things aren't looking too, too bad with this one. Um, some of the lighting here, you can kind of see this looks a little weird, but I think it's the light. You can, you can see a dent. But uh, you see they've taken these photos out in the light in kind of a nice area. The tires, a lot of the purists will say, you know, this isn't the right uh, white wall tire. And again, I don't think most people that are buying these cars are going to be concerned with that. This sticks out to me here. The interior is full-blown kind of custom interior. And if this is like what you like, by all means, like this is cool. I've been around custom cars, as I've said, a very long time. And for me personally, I like custom cars. I I have a bit of a uh, you know, uh, I guess a feeling towards the 60s and 50s. I really like the factory interiors, but you can see clearly here um, you've got some full blown interior stuff going on, including these um, little inserts here that you see on all four doors. You've got the kick panels. Uh, one thing I'll notice is that this does tie in nicely to the dash color. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of maroon, that's just my personal preference. Um, but, uh, but overall, I think it looks pretty good for a custom car. Um, what we can look through this more, I I'm guessing that, you know, this is a vinyl mixed with, you know, whatever other type of material. So it talks about, of course, which is super popular diamond stitched, um, you know, uh, stitching. You'll see that in a lot of hot rods and whatnot, beige carpeting, uh, it talks about the mats, 
a pioneer CD player they mentioned earlier has been hidden in the glove box again. I like that. You know, there's no point on these cars, especially 64, 65, these beautiful dashes. I mean, you'd be kind of dumb to go and, and try to put a CD player in here. It just would not look right. Uh, stick to the glove box for sure. Um, we can see here the side and wing windows are power adjustable. I've never seen, although I talked about in the late 60s, I've never seen vent windows on 64, 65 that weren't power. So I don't know if that was even an option, but, uh, you know, of course they're being, you know, forthcoming here. The driver's side rear door switch does not raise the glass, although the window can be closed using the driver switch. Something that you always got to look at, a gentleman emailed me the other day, he went to look at a car that was on Hemmings and a different website. Um, I always tell people when you go to look at the cars, a lot of times you walk around them and you're like excited because you're like, man, I might be buying this car. And you don't think to like, hey, can we get in the car? Can you start it? Ask the owner. Of course, keep your foot on the brake. Um, we've talked about how these cars can jump into reverse and, um, you know, have someone start the car, have someone show you the top works fully up, fully down, but also then go through all the windows. You want to see these front two left or left or right. These are the vent windows. These are the front windows here. And then these are the rear windows. This is the bypass switch, which was a feature that allowed for you to kind of bypass if the car was off. Let's say you're at a, a picnic and um, you wanted to like, oh, wow, it's going to start raining. Let me put the windows up. Instead of having to reach in here to turn the key on, you could hit the bypass switch and then you could put the windows up. A lot of times uh, I've been seeing this a lot. Three spoke steering wheel they always talk of, um, but that's, you know, the factory steering wheel. The five-digit odometer shows 18,000, approximately 1,000 of which have been added under the current ownership. True mileage is unknown. If if the odometer is working, my guess would easily be that this car has 118,000 miles. I've talked about the 65 that I purchased. It shows um, over 100,000. You know, someone could easily go, oh, this car's got 7,000 miles. But if I look back at the paperwork um, – the congresswoman and her husband that owned the car that I bought from Robert in California, the paperwork clearly shows like it was getting serviced at 70, 80,000 miles. So uh, if there is paperwork, it'll give a little bit of a trail to, you know, if this car had been serviced, let's say at 92,000 miles, you can then, um, you know, come to the conclusion that, okay, yeah, you know, over the past X amount of years, since the date on that paperwork, you know, now they're at 118,000, right? Pretty simple stuff. You can see here John Cashman, but I uh, always look right here, and you can see uh, he got into doing this. I don't know what year. We had John, of course, on Lincoln Attic Podcast, but he got to a point where he's like, hey, you know, if you want, I can sign my name. I should ask him how that started, maybe if someone asked him to do that or if he just said, hey, I can do it. John retired after 40 years in the business, um, often regarded as one of the best out there, uh, best in the business, really uh, helped keep a lot of these cars on the road. And anytime that John worked on it, you know you got the full kind of upgrade, if you will. This um, apparently was in California 2019. Oftentimes, people would go to Palm Springs where he was living. They would bring the car or, of course, John was famous for going to you um, if you were on his path, you know, as he was zigzagging, crossing the country. The top is shown to be operational in the video, which is great. We want to see that. When we look at the engine bay, we see right here there is no AC compressor. That's the easiest tell to tell us that, hey, this is not an AC car. Again, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I have a couple of cars, and I hate to say the, the air condition doesn't work in either. I got to do kind of a full upgrade in one and plan to kind of do a minor upgrade in the other one. Uh, so a lot of times when the, when the uh, top is down, you're cruising, you know, whatever I live in Florida, it's very humid. It would be nice to have some cool air blowing, but I wouldn't say depending on where you live in the country, this probably isn't a deal breaker. We can see here that it has the two uh, screws and uh, bolts, whatever. And this tells us right away that it is the two port okay these are junk all right i hate to say any other word uh it's junk you can see right here where this uh, brass fitting comes off here this is one port this is two port this brass fitting comes off here and then you've got your return line i know some people would watch this and go well no big deal i'm telling you if you look at the usual places the lincolnforum.net you go into these different facebook groups Talk to Lincoln owners. They will tell you that having this two-port 
uh, John Cashman, Blair Farmer, all of the greats in this Lincoln scene of ours will tell you these two ports are literally trash. The reason being is the engine bays on these cars get very hot. Okay, if you own one, get a digital thermometer sometime, the little laser beam ones that you can get, um, and, and shoot it right around this header uh, after the car's been running a while, okay, and you've got now and turned the car off. You will see th- it gets hot, okay? I had to use one when I was checking to see if my thermostat was kind of working and, and verifying that everything was working okay, but I, I say that they're not super expensive. You're probably going to spend three dollars $400 on one if you don't have a core, of course, this is not a core, um, but it has to be replaced because with the engine getting – this engine bay getting so hot, uh, it will cause something called vapor lock. You can Google that. You can look into it. It's not specific to these cars, but when this fuel gets so hot in here and it begins to kind of boil before it ever makes it through – here, which is the fuel filter through the fuel line into the carburetor, these cars will tend to sputter out and die out. Um, And it's uh, oftentimes um, brought right back to one, either the radiators clogged and you're not getting good, um, you know, uh, coolant coming back through with a good thermostat and or uh, typically it's this uh, two port. Um, So again, you see the two dots here. We know that it's the two port. We can look here. Again, not a deal breaker. You would just want to change this out ASAP. I want to say the 64 I bought, (laughs) excuse me, in December 2017, it had a two port. And of course, I tossed it in the trash and I had uh, acquired a three port or I had one and I had it put on there. So enough of that. We also see that it has the upgraded master cylinder, which is good. And um, again, you can see this is a two um, reservoir master cylinder. The single ones are junk. They're, they could be definitely a safety hazard. So it's good that this has been done. If you took this to a local mechanic, I don't know what the cost would be. I mean, probably a few hundred, several hundred dollars uh, for them to kind of come in here. All they got to do is change this. And then, of course, bend some new brake lines and that type of thing. But, um, you know, that's it's been already done. Also, just to stop for a moment, we are taking a look at uh, bringatrailer.com, and really, even though this has already been sold, I'm just kind of going through some things that would maybe help you as a potential buyer of one of these cars. Also, we're going to kind of compare why this one sold for more here in a moment. Uh, It talks about the four-barrel carb from the factory, 320 horse. The oil was changed September 2020, and it gives a little bit more information here. Underneath the car, you can kind of see this is typically how um, these uh, – there will be these little – I don't know what they are, bumps, um, you know, a little bit of roughness. Th- this is normal for these. I mean the cars I've owned and the cars I've seen in person, uh, this is definitely normal. This looks pretty good and kind of your normal wear and tear underneath uh, from what I can see there. Uh, so you have – this one's cool. It looks like – I think if you put one video, it duplicates it here. So what I'm going to do is not necessarily – I did not watch these yet, but based upon this one, it looks like it's a walk around. So pretty cool. He – they, you know, they did a video, you know, to market this car, which is cool. I like to look all up in here to see if there's any kind of rust or body filler and that type of thing. So this one's kind of a a real nice – you can kind of tell like a professional style video, which I'm all for. Um these um, tend to get all, these are pot metal. They tend to get real nasty. Uh, I've got some kind of gross ones um, that I've went with some brassos and kind of cleaned up pretty good. But uh, you will often see pitting and things like that on these. Th- these actually look pretty good. Uh, you can see all the stainless here it looks real good. They did put the factory, these are factory for 65. They did put those back in there. You can kind of see that, um, a little bit of the pitting in here. That's all normal. These actually look pretty good. And you can see kind of the customization that was done here and here. I don't think the interior looks bad. I just like the factory interior myself. Um, One other thing for 65, we don't really ever talk about that. You can kind of tell from the dash is this item in 64 to adjust the clock actually hung down just like the odometer um, trip mileage deal that hangs down. And you'll often see that down there and you can kind of twist it. Um, in 64, this actually was the same. It kind of hung down here and you had to 
he had to kind of you know lean over on the the front bench seat, if you will, um, if you didn't have buckets, and you would just twist that to adjust the clock. And there was like a minor improvement in 65. That's the one tell on the dash is that little hole right there. And then you have your little knob. Uh, that's one other thing that when you take this bezel out, you have to align that to to get that little, um, I don't know, pin, if you will, or whatever sticking through. Uh, you have to kind of line that perfect with everything else on the left and kind of put that back on. So um, I, I've been wanting to mention that, but haven't had an opportunity. We can see here it does not have tilt column. Uh, you uh, the the easy tell on the tilt is that you'll see here the different levels and there's a button at the end of the shifter if it has tilt. It's kind of a rare option. I've talked about that on Lincoln Attic podcast, but um, no big deal. Of course, not a deal breaker at all. Uh, you can um, see here. I tend to look in here and it kind of shows you. You know when they did the respray, you can see some overspray here. It kind of shows that. How much care did they take to respray it? You know, was it a quick pull it in one day job, get it out of here, you know, that type of thing. But when you see overspray on here, it's not a bad thing, but it'll give you a little bit of tell on how clean um, the, uh, the, the, you know, the work was done and how much care and time they put into it. Anybody that's a painter body guy knows that, you know, painting a vehicle is a lot of work. And these cars, as I said before, it is, um, it's crazy the amount of, uh, moldings and things like that that are on these cars so you can see here kind of just a continuation fantastic they're showing the top working and um you know i often talk about here so you see the flapper so when that deck lid goes up where it's at the flapper has to uh, this upper back panel switch when it's adjusted properly this flapper has to go all the way up and it has to basically um be in the full upright position, okay? And when it does, um, th it allows for this top to clear and go in here. You'll sometimes see where these are sagging a little bit or someone has to put their finger up here and kind of lift it up. Um, that's because it, they do get, it does get pretty close to the flapper, um, so to speak, and, and we'll see if we can kind of see it here. You can see a passerby or this guy's like, you know, freaking out, like, man, that's a nice car, Um which will typically happen, but you can kind of see how close it gets. A little deceiving here, but again, if if things aren't properly working and this deck lid is closed a little bit, um, or it's not fully in this position, or the flapper is hanging down a little bit, it, it, it'll cause this not to be able to go down. So there's a lot of things that have to kind of be working, you know, to ensure that the top is fully operational. I forget if we reviewed this one before. Maybe we did, but I remember this guy walking by, and he's like, dang, man, that's a nice car. You got people walking by going, you know, they want to look at the car, but, of course, they see that they're filming. And then, of course, the locks go down. He's got the vent windows. He's got the up and down um, showing this. You can see how slow they typically are versus how quick. That That's an indication that there's grease that needs to be cleaned from the tracks. And... He's kind of showing um, – you can see he's reaching back to the rear one, and now he's putting it up there. So it, he mentioned that the, it doesn't go down, I think, um, from the front switch, and, and those are typical things. Uh, we'll see if he shows the auto drops working. Again, a lot of people do not. They either – if they're not working on the car – oh, let's see. He might show us right here. Yep, auto dropped work. So good presentation there. You see when he pushed that, um, that in – and he began to open that door, that window automatically dropped. If that top is up, that's going to allow for this to drop, the person to exit or enter. It's closed, and then this goes back up and seals perfectly against that seal up there. If you've ever had one of these cars or been in one where the auto drop's not working, it takes a little bit to pull the door open because this is getting caught on the um, – the moldings and then when you go to when you go to shut it over time it's like the moldings get kind of torn right there so this is what you want and this is great uh, just a note this is not a factory option for the passenger rear view or the passenger mirror i think they call them rear view mirrors but the passenger mirror um this is an add-on which is a cool thing uh tony my buddy has one on his car uh, i certainly think it's cool but you know just want to note that for you guys he doesn't show this one working. You can kind of see it looks like it's down a little bit. Um, it could be an indication that the auto drop is not working on that side. The reason why I tell you that is, again, you know, you could get this car and be like, man, this auto drop's not working here. 
for people that know how to work on those, it, it can be kind of expensive. So, um, you know, just something no, to note on that, 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 you know, if you're, if you're checking this stuff out in person, you know, check to see if the auto drops work. If they don't, then just, you know, have a plan to get those fixed. So I, I would say pretty good presentation there. Here's another nice thing. Wow. A nice carpeted trunk kit. Um, not the factory um, carpet in here, but man, I love it. It, it blends really well. Um, you've got your little amp here. It probably has the Bluetooth that kind of ties into the stereo up there. And of course, in this year, all of your um, stuff for the top is all over here. So this looks great. I mean, oftentimes you're going to find these with these pieces, these pieces pieces missing here which can get pretty expensive you're also going to um oftentimes find you know no carpet kit or the original and it looks just very very dingy um also i need to do a video in the future to talk about this bar here john cashman um if he worked on this car which we know he did he would have installed this or suggested it this bar is critical for 6465 and um they, I don't, I don't know if they installed these in the earlier 61 through 63s of John did, but I know for 64, 65, I mentioned it. You got to put this bar in here. So I need to make a note to, uh, to do a video on that. There is someone that sells a kit. If you don't want to go buy the items that you need, um, to, to be able to do it. So let's close this there. A good presentation overall. Of course, they don't have access to a lift. And then I'm not going to go through all of these photos. Uh, the video is already kind of getting long, but this will kind of show you, you know, the car probably has spent some time outside. I mean, you've got some pitting here. Dash certainly isn't perfect. You'll tend to kind of see where it'll separate here. This is the vinyl main, um, you know, this main piece here. And, um, this is kind of the metal with, I believe it's, it's technically vinyl on top of it, but, um, you know, you can kind of see, you can kind of see where it's separating there. Um, if you're also looking at this cars, get underneath them if you can and look to see if there's any welds or anything in here to see if, you know, maybe the car was ever in front end damage or if there was a fender changed. I got a chance to witness John Cashman one time looking at a car that I was helping a guy buy or sell. And, um, that's something that he did and he could kind of tell in one of, um, one of his, uh, checkpoints is that, you know, the car had a welded on fender again, not a bad thing, but if someone's looking for a car that's quote untouched or, you know, doesn't want, you know, a car that's been really monkeyed with too much, those are some things to look at. I mentioned the mirror a moment ago. This is actually not the correct aftermarket mirror. So you can see here, there are a couple companies like T-Bird Ranch uh, I might be Thunderbird Ranch, but there's a couple companies and one of them does sell uh, an item that you can basically screw in here because there's no screw holes. And it, it uh, is an exact replica of the driver mirror, but it's flipped. This is not it. This does not look bad. But of course, I'm just pointing that out to you. Uh, you can see in here a little bit crusty. A lot of the stuff, you know, you could easily take out. These are uh, certain screws that they use for each of the backup lights. Uh, these come out super easy. If you were really looking to detail this, you know, you'd get in here and want to clean all this. Um, I mentioned too in the past about surface rust kind of on the lower bumper. A lot of times you can get all this off here with different uh, polishes, but it kind of gives you an indication of how much this car has been cared for. Also, these bumper inserts are 65 only. They've got the line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They got the eight kind of grooves, and this is paint. You can see it is um, flaking pretty bad here. You can pay a pinstriper, or you can go in yourself and um, you know paint the black back on. If they're dented, I do uh, make. Uh, I, I have a guy that I know. He makes replacements, and they uh, they go on very nicely. Um, the replacements I make have grooves in them, but they do come unpainted. So if yours are pretty bad, um, I do offer that option. I'll be adding those to Lincoln Addict uh, very soon. The website, they're on my other website for now. Uh, so again, in this area, you could typically um, see that th this is normal for, for all of this kind of little grunginess, I'll call it. Um, there should be a tag light right up here. Um, hopefully that works. And um, we hadn't really had a chance to look at a car yet that doesn't have a rear plate on it. Uh, these bumper ets, um, I had mine re-chromed at advanced plating, but you can see these actually look pretty good. A couple little dents here. 
So let's see where we're at. We know the interior. We kind of saw a bunch of that stuff. You got the stereo in here. I mentioned the other day, I think in a video, this is typically uh, missing. There's a little cover that goes over the fuses here. Uh, man, these are the old school fuses. And um, you can see like just in here, uh, I mean, it looks a little mm, – not over the top, right? I mean, you, we've we've looked at some cars that are spot on. You know, you can see in here. It just gives you a little bit of indication of how well these cars or said car was maintained. And, and this one certainly looks rough around some edges, not a lot. Uh, here you can see where they did not um, – well, okay, let me say it like this. You can see in here where it doesn't look like – they have the weather stripping in here. It does not look like it. And this is something you would maybe, if you're looking at one of these cars, you maybe wouldn't notice. But no weather stripping in here is not good, okay? And if you go on steel rubber, S-T-E-E-L-E, rubber.com, you'll see the stuff's not super um, cheap. But you would want to have the rubber in here because obviously, depending on where you're at, you don't want water getting in here. You don't want water sitting here and things like that either. So um, that's something that uh, that I'm noticing there. If you're noticing things that I'm not or you're saying, hey, you know, correct me if I miss something, you can see I kind of go through these and I usually don't look at a lot of photos. I kind of just do these, um, you know, try to keep them pretty raw. There's not a lot of photos underneath the car, but what I'm seeing is kind of the typical underneath of a car this age. Um, it does look like the exhaust has been redone, which is good. Uh, I would want to see more photos up in the front. Uh, you can see that they've done some undercoating. It looks like here. Um, I'm always skeptical in this area, you know, looking here to see if there's any um, – you know, if there's any, you know, crusty areas, you know, you could take a little, uh, you could take your hand or you can take um, a little screwdriver and kind of go through there. This, um, th this is, you know, a cheap recover, which is fine. Um, you know, I, I would, I would wonder, how, you know, has it, has it, you know, was it sitting outside? Was it inside? Um, and here it's hard to tell if there's any really rust on the deck lid. You see John's uh, signature there, some of the overspray. You can look up the DSO 16, which I think we can scroll back up to look at that. Um, here you can see uh, some of the paperwork, you know, uh, receipt, you know, not 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 super cheap, right? So let's go back up briefly and see if they have the section here. They don't. Um, so it must be like a, a selection that or. A section that you pick because of the DSO. I don't know that DSO off the top of my head, the destination um, area, but um, there you go. That one sold for 61000 So because this video is pretty long already, I do want to hit on this, and I'll probably do an in-depth review on this one at some point, but about two months prior, this one sold for 90000 okay? I immediately knew from these photos this was a Nathan Wilson uh, car. Uh, driving dreams restorations out in the greater Orlando area. You can look him up, uh, driving dreams restorations. I'm sure many of you know of him on YouTube. He doesn't do a lot of videos now. He used to do more. I wish he would do more. He's a super talented guy. All I will tell you is this. If you look through these photos, um, this is a very, very nice car. Okay. It's got the newer style AC, um, compressor, which many people swear by. It does have the original master or original style master cylinder. He does have some photos underneath the car to kind of show how nice it is. He always does very nice professional videos. Uh, when I went through all the photos, there weren't a lot underneath, um, but this um, kind of gives you an indication of how clean it is. It does look like it's been resprayed, which some of the um, the paperwork, I think, speaks to that. But uh, you've got a, a very, very, very nice car there uh, as far as uh, the look. Uh, you do see that it had the two port. And again, most of us would say, you know, the two ports are not good. I have actually seen some people say, I've never had an issue with it. So by all means, you can try to run with it um, because we're seeing it here. But I would uh, caution you that um, – that you know they're 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 not the best you know depending on where you live the climate here is super hot as well keep that in mind uh he did not have a lot of photos underneath but i'll tell you what sold this car you got a nice color 
It's coming from Nathan, which you can get on the phone with him if you were thinking about buying this. And I'm sure you know you can ask him those questions that you want. But just look, great presentation. But the the biggest thing on this is it has that factory appearance. Okay, I don't know that the carpet is factory carpet. It it I I want to say it's not, and I could be wrong. Nathan knows these cars really really well. But regardless if it is or not, the seats are factory. Um, style, uh, you've got the front seat belts, you've got the you know the door panels, door cards, all of that stuff. It's very classy. Uh, here's a perfect example of uh, this is the tilt column car. So you've got your little uh, different uh, you know levels here for the the tilt. You've got the AM radio, and you've got the optical eye. I call it that. I know it's technically another term, but but again, you know you can see the difference here. Um, these are super nice um, you know photos. Uh, the trunk. You know, all looks good, although it would need at some point per John Cashman, you'd want to put the bar in here. And this could just be a car that he lightly refreshed and he was selling and there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, I just point things out to try to help other people. Uh, you could see in here how clean this paint job was and you can see that they replaced um, under the hood uh, insulation. So again, a very, very nice car. And the only other thing I want to show you guys is paperwork, okay? Look at look at the paperwork here. Um, this uh, talks about back in 2008, the car was sold for $35,000. Here's a Lincoln Land invoice that I think is a uh, three, about three grand. Uh, here's another one for $3,300. Here's one for $4,000, Graveyard Classics. Strip paint to bare metal where needed, check for rust, repair as needed, blah, 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 right? All of this work. That was 2012, so literally 10 years ago. Um, but again, you start adding up those receipts, and you can see why this car jumped up um, to a price of $90,000. Again, Nathan is a great guy. I, I truly uh, believe in, in anything that he sells or puts his name on or whatnot. And uh, of course, again, I won't watch the whole video. There's his information, by the way. But um, he's got this beautiful property that he takes these photos and videos of. And uh, everything looks awesome here. Very, very, very nice car. And, of course, he did switch the wheels out um, for this photo shoot. I remember him doing that. Um, and then he's got a driving. Um, so that's one thing that the other um, video did not have. It didn't have driving, but it did have a lot of other stuff. So... I hope you guys enjoy this one. Appreciate a like, a comment, maybe share it if you're in a different group with your friends and you guys are thinking about these cars, you know, copy the link and share it. I really appreciate uh, the support. I just do this for the love of the cars. Uh, of course, you can go to lincolnaddict.com. Uh, you can pick up a sticker. We've got white, blue, and the shirts. Again, keep in mind, it is technically the pre-sale uh, period. Uh, it's going to be a few weeks before all of this stuff ships out, but get out to lincolnaddict.com and check it out. Bring a trailer. Shout out to them. Cool website. I'll talk more about these cars in the next video. Take care. We out of here. Peace.